my lady and my lords, my name is Mudomi Vianculu. My senior started addressing you on the fictional aspects of the case before you, and I'll focus on showing you why it is fiction. And in the literature and the arts, they talk of several genres. When we thought about this matter, we thought the fiction before you is of the genre called tragic comedy. That is a combination of comedy and tragedy. In terms of tragedy, we thought of Macbeth, and we thought of Macbeth talking about the demise of Lady Macbeth and the frustrations of life and saying, it is a story full of sound and fury which signifies nothing. I will tell you shortly why this petition before you is a work of fiction and specifically a story full of sound and fury, what my colleagues have called shock and awe, but which signifies nothing. We thought of the comical bit of this case that we have to engage this eminent court to hear spurious allegations. And the comedy we thought about is called Much Ado About Nothing. And we'll be hoping to persuade you that the case before you is not only full of sound and fury, but signifying nothing, but is much ado about nothing. Lastly, we came closer home and thought of a work of fiction in the realm of comedy and tragedy by a son of East Africa called Shaban Roberts. That work is called Kusadikika. And many of you, my lords and ladies who have read it, you will find it is a work in which people are invited to believe every allegation, however spurious, however preposterous. And we suggest to you that maybe the petitioner himself is taking you to be that country called Kusadikika by Shaban Roberts, in which if you're told the sun rises in the north, you don't apply your mind. Your challenge, my lady and my lords, is who do you believe amongst all these people with stories and counter stories? Is it the man whose name combines the names of two saints, John and Mark, and at that name, Gidongo? who was head of ethics in this country, but has had the audacity to produce before you forged logs. And when he is called out, instead of profusely apologizing, he says you yet another affidavit full of ifs and buts. Is it Arnold Ocheng Oginga, advocate of the High Court of Kenya, a learned man, to be fair, but who produced to you documents that were disowned by all the presiding offices and documents he hasn't told you where he has found them and which my classmate, Mr. Mahat, was able to show you have actually been doctored to fit into the narrative of the fiction. Or, my lord, are you going to believe Kidongo when he tells you that the undisclosed man was demonstrating to him a Form 34A for governor, even though we all know the results for governor are not streamed on the public portal. Oh, my Lord, are we going to believe the four commissioners who we all saw day and night for six days and six nights? I use the word deliberately, my lady, because we never left our TV screens. Six days, six nights. We saw them announcing results that had been verified, and you were told by Mr. Mahat, indeed, they announced most of them. But when the winner becomes apparent, so they suddenly turn around and tell you Mr. Chebukati is a bad man. He should be crucified. 
Are those the people we are going to believe, my ladies and my lords? Or are we going to believe the petitioner himself when he tells you in his petition and affidavit that the Honorable William Ruto intercepted, altered, staged, and then dumped Form 34A on the e-portal? <laughs> my lady, why we thought this was the most elementary attempt at the fiction, if you do your math, what the petitioner was telling you is that the Honorable William Ruto was intercepting and changing on average 23 forms 34A per second in the span of eight minutes that he claims we staged, dumped, and altered over 11,000 forms 34A. A question was asked yesterday, my lady. How do you and how, when do you change a form 34A. And I will invite you to note from the structure of that form that most of the data comes pre-printed. The name of the polling station is pre-printed, the serial number. So the only things you would alter on that form are actually the things written by hand, either by the presiding officer or by the agents or the deputy presiding officer. Three clusters of people. In the event there are four agents, we are talking and writings of about seven people. And you're being told the Honorable William Ruto had the capacity to intercept these forms, 11,000 of them in eight minutes, and alter them. It is in the realm of fiction. And I suggest perhaps politicians should stick to politics and leave fiction to artists? Or are you going to believe my lady when you're told that the Honorable William Ruto had this young man with a laptop at the National Tiling Center and that this is the laptop he was using to do these things called dumping, staging, and whatever not? I think we may have our own views about various citizens, my lady and my lords, but I am struggling to understand who is this fraudster that would walk to a laptop not in some remote place, some inaccessible place where all he has is the network, but he would go to the National Tallying Center with a laptop, and the only reason he has that laptop is to intercept results in the full glare of our TV cameras in the full glare of all those security men and women that are in that telling center, under the ego eye of all the agents, it is simply spurious. My Lord, you are told all these things and I'm sorry if, if this is repetitive. The least we would expect is you to be shown a Form 34A that was altered and not the ones they have cooked as a work of fiction. The least we expected is for them to tell you which are the polling stations in which this interception, staging, and dumping occurred. In short, my duty, my lady and my lords, is to tell you, even if you are to look at this case with your most magnanimous and generous set of eyes, even if you are to be as benevolent as for the Christmas, the verdict you would return is that this case before you is a story full of sound and fury but which signifies nothing. The case before you is much ado about nothing, and you must tell the petitioner, this is not the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kusadikika. It is the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kenya. It is to be expected that when you move this solemn court, 
you don't put us in exercises that leave other civilizations wondering why we have to waste the time of the Supreme Court, or God forbid, even the small claims court, dealing with allegations of the type before you, which cannot be believed even by the most gullible person. Let the works of fiction be left to Hale Grissom, James Adliches, James Bond. This is a solemn platform. I regret and I pity all of us that we came to deal with such a spurious matter. Thank you very much. I see the ground now, my lady, to my learning friend, Melissa Nganye. She'll take over on issue number four and five.